Hi guys, so it's been a little while since I've done this. My last tutorial on scrub caps I just did for fun basically two years ago. I realized that there was a lot of attention um, to make these caps because of the PPE shortage that we're um, very much aware about. Comments as well about people struggling with resizing the measurements that I gave um, to fit their heads that are apparently much smaller than mine. So. Um, I thought I would just try to be helpful and make an updated video. Part one will be how to actually measure your head, the certain dimensions that you'll need to actually draw a pattern yourself at home. And then part two, of course, will just be a general how to go about sewing this cap. I unfortunately don't know how to make scaled patterns to print out. I just don't have the programs for that. If someone does, that would be great. Um, feel free to do so. Obviously, I just wanted to say I know that this is such a high time of stress for everybody. As a healthcare worker, I've seen really how sick people can actually get. Um, thankfully, it hasn't been too bad in my area just yet, but I know that it could be coming. Who knows? Um, I just know that as long as we stay positive, as long as we support each other and do the right thing, which whatever um, part in society that we have to play, um, that will just pull through. So yeah, anyway, let's just jump right into the tutorial. So starting off, you'll need a large piece of paper to draw out your pattern. If you don't have one quite like this, you can just tape several pieces of paper together edge to edge. Next, you'll need some sort of light weight cotton-based fabric. About half a yard is plenty. Now for basic sewing materials, you'll need something to cut the fabric with. I personally really like the rotary cutter, but normal fabric scissors are fine. Some measuring tools. Pins for your fabric any sort of thread. I like to use contrasting colors um, to make things a little more fun, but you can use whatever you have on hand. If you are planning to leave a little extra room to encase some hair, you'll need a bit of elastic, just a couple of inches, as well as a safety pin. Other optional things that I find really helpful are fabric markers and seam rippers in case you make any mistakes. A sewing machine, of course, and an iron. There are basically only two pieces to this pattern. First is the top. You'll measure your crown, which is kind of like where you'd put a headband. For me, this was seven inches, and this will be the width. I would start this mark about six inches down on paper. Next, you'll want to mark the length, so start from where you just measured at your crown down to where you want the hat to go. For me, it was about 9 inches. Next, find the middle of your headpiece. And because I want to make this somewhat of an ovoid shape, I started the top part as 4 inches and then reserved the rest of the length as 5 inches after the width line, if that makes sense. Draw an oval shape around your markings. Then use this oval as a guide to create sort of like a bottleneck shape near the end. Um, I'm going to encase an elastic, so I'm extending it a little bit more, but if you're not planning to do so, just shorten this last bit. Make sure to account for a seam allowance. I'm going to use a 5-8 seam allowance here. The easiest way to make this symmetric is just to cut the one half that you just drew, fold it over, and trace it on the other side. Come up with the top piece like this. Next we'll work on the second part of this pattern which will include the wraparound part of the cap as well as the back ties. Start from the crown and go down and measure the forehead portion. For me this was about five inches. This will be the front part. Going back to the top piece that you just drew, take your flexible measuring tape and measure your temple which goes from the front to that width line Mine was 6.5 inches, and this will be a horizontal marker that tells you when you'll start tapering this side piece. 
from the middle of your forehead wrap around to the back of your head this will be the total length of the main part of your side headpiece from the last horizontal line that we made tapered down to the end of that piece so last few steps of this pattern I'm extending the bottom portion to account for the band. This will double up. It looks pretty wide. I ended up trimming it later to two and five eighths inches. And then I am extending the back seven inches to create the ties. So there you have the side piece. Make sure that you mark the front part to be on the fold of your fabric, as well as adding in, again, five eighths seam allowance. So now we're finally ready to start cutting to the fabric. Remember again to start this on the fold of the fabric. That's one piece and then just one simple one for the top. Start working on the side piece. Make some small notches on the curve. This will help you fold in the sides and make it easier for the fabric to bend. The idea here is that you want to enclose the edges so that they don't fray So take your piece to the ironing board and press in the curve as well as the whole bottom of the band portion. Here I'm using a straight stitch just on the small part of the curve and I'm doubling back here just to give it some reinforcement. I then went over the whole part of the bottom band with a straight stitch. Now that the bottom hem is sewn, then it's ready to be doubled over, and then you'll just sew over the back portion to create the ties in the back. So here you can say I tried to go over the same line that I had, not the cleanest, but I double stitched and it does work pretty well. Now we'll move on to the top part. I made a small casing at the bottom just by doubling it over and stitching it straight. This will be where the elastic goes. Here, two inch elastic and attach a safety pin to one end. Using the safety pin, feed the elastic through and then pin the ends of the elastic. and just secure each end of the elastic with a little stitch. Congrats for making it this far. It is now time to attach the two pieces together. Sorry my hair got on the screen there. Find the middle part of the front portion of each piece. And now put the pieces right sides together, match up the middle portions and pin in place um, you'll pin along the curve now, which is a little more challenging since it's um, not totally straight, but I hope that you can see how it comes into shape here. So this is how it looks now uh, right side out. And I had a bit of a wider portion at the bottom that I wanted to keep loose. I just reinforced mine near the ties, but if you want to go over the whole rim again, just to keep that in place, you can do so. And that is it, guys. I hope this was helpful, simple, and straightforward to follow. If you make your own, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see how they turn out. Everyone, let's stay strong, stay safe, and let's get through this together.